Well, welcome to today's Wednesday walkabout, even though we are shooting it on Tuesday. And let me tell you, today I will be recording in my garden journal that it is 79 degrees right now. And what time? It is three o'clock. I anticipate we will definitely break 80 oh, yeah. before the end of the day. Uh, tomorrow, the forecast high initially was even higher, so I anticipate we will probably be equally as warm tomorrow. So that specifies, I think, very importantly, the reason we need to hydrate. I have definitely gotten out all of my sunscreen products and I have put them in areas in and around the front, uh, the front terrace so that I will remember to use them. I have some of my favorite hats that are now located right in front because it may just be February, what's the date today, Stuart? February 19th, 20th, um, but it's already hot. And it really <laughs> concerns me, not only because it's hot today in February, but what that, what that portends for July, but also <laughs> what it portends if it gets really, really cold again. Oh, wow. So in the last Working Wednesday walkabout, you guys noticed that I was doing a lot of actual working. I was starting to clean up and cut back a lot of the brown dead stuff, uh, dead branches, cleaning up leafy debris, because if it's this warm already, all of these things that are going to be fabulous in the spring show, well, let's just say I don't want them to have a back drop of dead crunchy leaves. So let's get started on today's Wednesday walkabout. Well, I think I revealed it in one of my previous videos, but oh my goodness, I think the railings look absolutely magnificent. They'll look even better over time as they age and oxidize and weather just a little bit. But I think they really ground and give visual weight to this area. And I've also noticed practically that Hubs and I just love being able to grab onto them um, not only to support ourselves going up and down, but particularly as a counterbalance if you're carrying up a bag of groceries or something like that. Definitely that will, it will be helpful when we have ice and snow. So with that, I would say, Stuart, come on up, up to the top terrace and let's start looking at some of the things that are coming up, some of the things that I'm going to be doing this week, and also maybe a few plant selections. So if you look, let's see, Stuart, over here, and I know I've showed you guys these before, but I think it's important for you to see that now lots of tulips are starting to come up. So this, this whole kind of, oh, I don't know what you would call this, or half of a rondelle or something in here, you can see that there's lots of tulips coming up. I'm starting to fertilize the violas and the pansies. I put some malorganite down on the grassy turf that has cool season grass that was overseeded with cool season grass. And so I anticipate, especially if we could get a rain, that it would green up very, very quickly. So now on the upper terrace, I am still waiting on a few things to tell me if they are hanging on or if they are really sincerely dead. And I think, for example, that this boxwood, which got planted a little bit late, was probably, um, probably succumbed to the cold and it might be really sincerely dead. But then I open it up, and this is what I encourage you guys to do, and look down in here. Okay, I can scratch it. I can't really tell if that's green or if it looks kind of yellow, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave it be for a while. When I start seeing new growth come out on all of the boxwoods that I know <laughs> are really sincerely alive, then I will cut off the dead stuff on the ends, which is brittle. You see that just kind of broke off very, very easily and see if maybe it can flush out in new growth. So that's what I'm working on there. I am starting to complete all of the leafy cleanup around my perennials and things because it's just so, so warm. And the other thing is, I want them to start filling out. I mean, if it's gonna be warm, I might as well take advantage of it. And so here, some of my salvias and things, I cut these back and look how they're already starting to come out in tufts. Now the sooner 
that this comes out, the sooner it will bloom and the sooner I will have beautiful purple blossoms that I am hoping and anticipating will be blooming in tandem with this Minoan lace that's coming up, gosh, maybe almost too vigorously here in the front beds, but I can always edit it out. And I think, I think the montage that it will create up here, the beauty of, of the purple um, kind of, um, oh, not spherical but conical maybe shapes of the salvia will look brilliant i believe this is east friesland salvia some of it may be may night but it will look beautiful with the umbral heads umbral heads of the minoan lace and i think it'll be just very very pretty here especially when the sunshine ligustrum gets pruned back and starts flushing out in all of that golden yellow and i was checking on it the other day and even, I don't know if you can see here, Stuart will try to get a, a close up for you, but even this section here that looks like it's completely, completely dead, if you can, I don't know if you squint maybe, can you see the new foliage that's starting to come up right there? And it's starting to also burst forth on what looks like it is dead twigs, dead branches. But that's another reason that I want to get things cleaned up because I'll know what's going to start coming out and what might necessarily uh, need to be cut back, that's redundant, might need to be cut back because it is, it is really dead and browning. Then I'll give a shear to a lot of these other things that will then uh, respond to that shearing by putting out new green growth. The Fire Chief Arborvitas, certainly uh, the butterfly candy, and to a certain extent, some of the evergreens. So I'm getting ready to do that. Okay, another change that I made. Well, that was a show-off truck. I don't know if you guys could... It was a show-off truck. It really wanted to rev its motor. Um, another thing that I did with, um, actually it was kind of a consultation between Hubs and myself. And this is where Stuart, let's go, let's both of us go down here together. And a number of you, this thrilled me, a number of you commented on the wonderful shadow play of these new railings on the steps. And I could not agree with you more. And that leads me to my question of the day. And that is, do you guys delight in the shadow play of your gardens as much as I do? And do you even sometimes think about that before you install something like a railing or some kind of garden ornament or a plant? Just how beautiful the shadows can be as part of the overall effect of your landscape. Okay, so Okay, so here here may be a very very subtle change. But from Last week's video, I don't know, I don't know if we can find an image of it or not, Stuart, but at last week, both of those pineapple or artichoke, whatever they are, concrete finials, they were at the top of the steps right here. Well, Hubs and I decided that they were really hugging the railings a little too much. You couldn't even see them. And we thought they would look far more beautiful spaced out as punctuation points, exclamation points, if you will, at the top of these arched flower beds. So I think it'll be really, really wonderful when these tulips are in bloom, when everything is in bloom, and then we've got these really handsome finials here. So we just moved over one of the 12 by 12 pavers to elevate them a little bit, and voila, now we have these really, really wonderful punctuating garden ornaments in a different place, but I think equally as stately. It also kind of tricks your eye into thinking that perhaps the upper terrace is a little bit wider than you would otherwise think. And when everything is in full bloom, I think they're gonna be really spectacular. 
one of the reasons we put those kind of gar garden ornaments in our landscapes is because they look good no matter the weather. So those concrete appointments are handsome even if it's 110 or if it's minus 10. Okay, so speaking of minus 10, let's come back up here because I want to share with you a new to me plant. actually bought these in Carlsbad, California when I was out there before because I'd never seen them. And I think they are really fun and really spectacular. And you'll notice that I've got them just sitting here in these urns. And that's because I was not sure how cold hardy they were and the tag didn't tell me and so I had to do a little bit of research on these really handsome Senecio, Candy Cat, Candy Cons, Angel Wings. I'm probably butchering the translation, but this is actually a succulent. Can you it's, show them the texture? <laughs> yes, can it's I show so them good. the texture? It is, well, it's very much like lamb's ear, only a little less thick, a little less thick, a little bit more like suede. And, and so they're very, very sensual to feel them. I love the fact that they almost from a distance read white. Yeah. Now these are very, very drought tolerant, heat tolerant, They'll be, they would be able to handle this, this exposure. But even though my initial reaction was, oh, these would look great in these urns in which I have nothing planted right now, I could, put these um, obelisks, these eggshell or egg-shaped obelisks on them. And so I thought, oh, these would look great in here and then I could plant some seasonal color. But I decided against it, why? Because in reading about them, they demand excellent drainage. So this applies to anything in your container plantings. If they demand excellent drainage, and you have containers that no matter how many times you unplug their drainage hole, and I do with regularity on these, they still have a tendency to hold water. Now, for some plants, that's a good thing. For this or any other type of plant that demands great, great drainage, that would not be a good thing. So I don't think I will plant them in here. I will probably plant them in another container and surround it with some kind of, of blooming annuals or something. But I, I think they're spectacular. I just think that there's not good garden fit between this plant and these containers. Let's take a break and then we'll go back and we will, um, we will visit some other plant friends on the upper Terrace. We had a little bit of an interruption, but a very, very pleasant one. And a reason to get to know the name of your mailman. I have two different mailmen. Um, sometimes they're a male person, but in this case, I have two different gentlemen. One's name's Jack, one name, one's name's Jacob. That's hard to say. <laughs> and he's so kindly, he knows when we're shooting, he will stop, he will go on to the next house, he will wait. So cool. It's, it's so, it's <laughs> such a lovely man. And then and he'll say, I really try to, to you know, be, 
be polite when it comes to your shooting. And I mean, that is the value of being part of your community, being part of your neighborhood. And one of the reasons I just love this area. So I think exactly what he said was, you don't want to have to cut that so man. much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he, and he knew how he rolled. Okay, so then that told me that I wanted to share two things he brought me. Um, and I share this because you can get such great ideas not only great products but you can get great ideas, oh, ideas from here. catalogs and these ideas <laughs> just arrived in my mailbox serena and lily which my daughter-in-law delphia is just absolutely infatuated with and then lulu and georgia this is this is new to me um but there's lots of staging true to sarah's signature style okay you know me i love I love signature touches. Little These are modern, show. artful appeal. Yeah, great lighting. <laughs> Stuart, take note of the photography. But they give you all sorts of ideas for entertaining, for staging, um, for flower arrangements, just whatever. So if your budget um, or your just tolerance for stuff does not accommodate magazines, um, magazine subscriptions and things, then by all means, you know, gosh, now catalogs are so beautiful, whether online yeah, or in your difference. mailbox, then take a lot of, take a lot of tips from them. Um, but I digress. Some other things that I am doing before spring arrives is a little bit of spring cleaning. So my washable mats, I am cleaning and happily, I have a new railing here. Let me show off my, let me show off my new railing. This one's a little more kind of hidden. Yeah, this one's a little more hidden, um, uh, but it is perfect for drying oh, out, perfect. yes, drying out your throw rug right here. Um, and I, I, you know, it's not something I want to have out all of the time, but it shows that people really live here. Also, I'm washing, <laughs> I told you guys I loved my Hoka tennis shoes so much that I also washed them. And since it's such a hot, sunny, sunny day, um, they are out here drying too, along with, okay, this just make, made my heart putter. And one of the reasons, another reason I love my neighborhood so much, look here, are these little kids' garden gloves. Are these not precious? I think I'll probably, I see, I see Charlie sitting over there across the street and I may have to gift these to her because they're so, so cute. So, um, so let's see what else is going on. Okay. I'm really, really anxious for Lemon Lane to look good. So I may work on it next in terms of grooming it, cutting back a lot of the dead foliage in on around the foxglove and anything else the golden fever few that's um in some cases dead like this but other areas are just fresh and perky and here's another example where do you want to cut this back to control its growth or do you yeah or do you want that new foliage that's coming out on miss lemon abelia do you want it to have kind of a cascading effect? And that's definitely something you want to take into consideration from a design standpoint. Do you want something that is kind of cascading, kind of a fountain form, or do you want something that is more low and ground cover like before you cut back any of your plants like this, um, well, the kaleidoscope abelia, this Miss Lemon, whatever. Think about what form you want before you start to doing your pruning because I think the form will uh, influence the effect that you get and what effect is it you're trying to achieve. Now in here I also have all sorts of larkspur, larkspur that I seeded. It's already germinated. It will bloom this year and so I'll have this lovely blue backdrop or actually it will be about this color, the color of this little viola. And I need to do some grooming on these little violas. But it will be about this color. And won't that just be a perfect, a perfect marriage of two different hues, both purple and gold or purple and chartreuse, whatever you want to call that color. And I think it will be really, really beautiful. So this whole area, I think, will be the next, the next section of the garden that I will tackle. Um, I am going to really do 
a, take a deep look, do deep analysis on my trees to see if any of them, or excuse me, on my hollies to see if any of them look like they might be a little bit chlorotic, like they might not have good drainage, like they are yellowing to see if they need any acidic or iron fertilization. So I'll be doing that. Um, this, I can't believe this. Now this is, this is kind of fun and scary. So around here, you'll notice that my maple tree, my October glory, look at that. It's already budding out. Isn't that a great color? But it's already starting to bud out, which, and look, it goes all the way, show that Show that beautiful <laughs> Oklahoma sky. Look, it's budded out Put all the way to one. the top. Okay, can you see that? That's better. There we go. There we go. Teamwork. And this is probably budding out because it is you can in. You see the little red tips and kind of back off. Yeah. Oh yeah, all the way up to that beautiful Oklahoma sky, which is one of the best things about Oklahoma is the color of our sky. So. Uh, I, again, I think it is really coming out because this is very warm. It's got a southern exposure. My maple in the back ain't doing nothing yet because it's on the north side and it is in deep shade. But this one, I think once it comes out, it's really, really going to be beautiful and it will soften this area as will the entire area will be softened because it looks a little bit too angular. It looks a little bit like it needs a blanket or something to cuddle up with. And pretty soon, all of these plants will provide that kind of colorful blanket that it definitely, definitely needs. I've got a lot more shaping to do on the boxwood. I'm still a little bit reticent to do some of that. Um, I am in great anticipation to see if any of the agapanthus are gonna be coming up or not. And, uh, and then pretty soon I will be looking to see if the Encorzeas are coming out. And I'm a little bit nervous about the hydrangeas that I planted in the back, those that I transplanted. Interestingly, all of the boxwood that I brought from the other house and transplanted here, it's doing great. The boxwood that is struggling some, probably because the root ball wasn't as long as large, are the new boxwoods that I that I planted. Um, not so much any of the better boxwood, but some of the other varieties. So that's just a little bit of what's of what's going on here. I'm very anxious to start playing. Um, I think I showed you guys. Uh, I can't, I can't, even, my time is starting to get a little bit warped that I did plant some seed. Yeah, we did show them that. Yeah, we showed them the seed that's planted in here. And I anticipate that in the next couple of days, if this seed was viable enough, so that was just two days ago, that I will get germination because of the greenhouse effect that I've got going here. Um, it's time to start thinking about Easter, folks. It's start, time to start looking in your garden centers, in your nurseries for, at, you know, maybe if you have to have it for some short-term Easter color. Those are the things that are on the horizon, as are some of my speaking engagements. So I'm gonna be in Indianapolis at the Flower and Patio Show. I will be there on St. Patrick's Day with my family. I'm so excited answering your questions and visiting with you, signing books, etc., on March 16th and 17th. And then I will be here with my Oklahoma City friends at the fairgrounds, also at the Home and Outdoor Living Show. And I think I'll be there on the Friday and Saturday on the 24th and 25th. Stay tuned. We'll be doing lots of local media before before that day comes. So I'm I'm looking. I have so many th good things to look forward to, oh, yeah. and I hope you guys have good things to look forward to as well. You guys have sent me a number of personal messages lately, and I know some of you are going through some real health struggles and some you've lost loved ones. And I just want you to know that you you are thought of as I putter about in my garden. So there is your Wednesday walkabout for today. Go walk about someplace beautiful in your own neighborhood. <laughs>